then Europe. And Europe, uh, most of the countries, well, they have a uh, social welfare uh, program for health and others. Uh, we have to improve quality, both in rich and poor countries, and we have to improve financial protection. In the richest country, all people are not covered, uh, uh, but uh, uh, we can see a poor country may cover everybody, uh, every citizen of the country. So we have to address those questions for all the countries. In Bangladesh, uh, a tale of public engagement in health, uh, this is Joe Basta General Model. I'll um, say a little about it. How it came into being. Uh, in Bangladesh, the success of mass immunization campaign uh, expanded full of immunization. Uh, it has been successful uh, due to uh, involvement of people at all walks of life. So, many of the diseases which are EPA related, including polio, uh, has been eradicated and smallpox has been eradicated long ago, in 1975. And operational community clinic, this is uh, based uh, a big part of its management uh, is being shared by the people. Uh, they manage it and uh, in some cases they share uh, the resources to run it in a single day. We have a lot to improve this community clinic. It is now being run by uh, not by medical graduates but by uh, the people who have short training as a health assistant they are this. Running Chogasar Pujala Health Complex and Zenita District Hospital involving people who are an innovative task of a group of committed doctors led by Dr. Dadunov. Uh, the Chogasar uh, Pujala Health Complex uh, says uh, long ago it was housed in a very dilapidated state. And maternal death due to excessive bleeding both Dr. Emdad and his colleagues at Chogasar Pujala Health Complex. There was no operation theatre. No consultant, no gynecologist, no obstetrician, no anesthetist, but the uh, pregnant woman, uh, they attended the GIS health facilities, but the doctors have nothing to do but watching the bleeding and bleeding and ultimately die. So this condition moved them and they tried to do themselves with the help of the community how to save lives of the mothers. The local government and local community came forward to do the union health, uh, health complex, USC both for universal health coverage and uh, also for the Upozilla health complex. Uh, the, I have said it before, the Upozilla health complex facilities was housed in a tally shaped house. Uh, only outpatient department, outpatient facility was there, but local Upozilla operation a local government, they came forward and they shifted uh, at the assistance of the doctors working there uh, to a nearby library building. In the library building, indoor facilities was uh, started mainly for the delivery of mothers and so situation improved from now and then. And the local government donated to employ more cleaners if you don't employ cleaners more than the facilities cannot be kept clean and clean and from infection we have to uh, clean the hospital complex regularly. And uh, they have also uh, uh, donated to employ uh, mostly on voluntary basis a reception desk. In the rural health complex there is no reception desk and people cannot find the room where the doctors they can get service or why the pathology, why the dispensary, so a decision desk at the front improved a lot. Also, uh, the Upozala Health Complex was an open space, people came and their vehicles, bicycles, rickshaws, clubs together, so they make a boundary wall and decide to stand. These are small things, but they improved the situation a lot and our all the people's participation, the sense of ownership of the people, and the community organization taking the health complex as their own, that, that has uh, changed dramatically the situation of people in the health complex. I also came forward the Japan uh, JICA contributed to improve the health care delivery and other serious health complex. They also came to improve the maternal and child health situation in Chorasa. And also the other government officials, especially from general administration, we can see at the field level. Uh, doctors are often found at loggerheads with the general administration people 
and general administration people and police, they often, they are not friendly to our doctors, they clash with each other. But in the Jonas area, uh, the uh, TNO and now the Upojala Nirvahi Officer, Chief Executive from the government side to run after this uh, public administration, they came forward to help the uh, delimited children's uh, health complex to run in a smooth way. They allocated money for them. Uh, the local uh, administrative authority has more money than the health authority has. So uh, they transferred some of their money to improve the hospital building and other, uh, other uh, medical equipments and also for employing uh, more uh, people for cleaning the services. Uh, for cleaning services. Yeah. And they contributed to me some extra facilities in the Health Complex. And also, uh, uh, the team, uh, led by Dr. Renda, uh, they move, uh, after promotion, they move from the uh, Upujala Health Complex to Jerena Shadar Hospital as senior consultant. And, uh, uh, the, they are the mayor of Jerena, a very dynamic person. Uh, when the doctors were in trouble, the people enjoying the clinical services emergency, and you know, some of the patients may die, obviously. But people become angry because uh, the uh, rural health facilities have not every equipment they should have. So they blame it on doctors. You are the people who are who, uh, out of your negligence because a patient died. But when this problem arises at Jerena, uh, Southern Hospital, when Dr. Renda joined there, uh, he rushed to the mayor of the local municipality, Jerena municipality. He came uh, there and convince the people that this is not the fault of the any person, this is the fault of the system. We have to work together to improve the situation of the health service here. So don't blame any person for that. So the situation was uh, a legal solution. And from, from that point, mayor of that municipality, also the ex-mayor of the municipality, local member of parliament and uh, chairman of the Umojana Parishad, all people situated in the company with each other to help the doctors. So, in, the, in, the, in this situation, everybody was trying to cooperate with the health authorities to improve the situation, not fighting each other or shouldering all persons responsibility to others. So it was a big value. So the doctors working there, they found that they are security, they are mutual trust and how to solve the problem locally. And you know, those who are from Bangladesh, in the rural health complex, some international couples that people come to the health complex and the hospital to issue a false medical certificate so that they can uh, file a case against his rival party. Uh, if they are, they got minor injury, they press for the doctors to have a certificate on previous injury so that uh, the, uh, in, the, in the court they can punish their uh, rivals. But in those situations, uh, in Jirila and Jorasa, uh, the civil surgeon formed a committee. The committee will issue the certificate. It may be signed by one person, but the decision of the committee. So no influential person cannot exert their undue influence to one single doctor to write any fictitious medical certificate to further their rivalry. So uh, many things have been changed. So uh, it, it was possible because of the cooperation of local administration local people's security and the doctors. So uh, the security situation was improved. And you can see uh, the local donors, local philanthropic personnel, they have also donated. Uh, as for example, a generator cannot run without the uh, fuel. Uh, if we write to the Ministry of Health for guaranteeing uh, the money for the fuel, it will take three months or four months. In that time, the generator may run out of order. An ambulance can become uh, uh, non-functional due to shortage of some spare parts. So they have to write to the ministry for allocation of money uh, to uh, uh, make the benches of uh, make the uh, out of our ambulances. But local people they came forward to donate a small amount of money so that the ambulance can buy the spare parts and run it. So in that model. Uh, so local, local people's small amount of money they, that can that could make the medical equipments uh, running and uh, not out of service. This led to uh, the local doctors to form a, a systematic and institutional shape. They approached the Ministry of Health. 
how can we utilize the local people's donation to solve our petty problems? Then, health economics unit of Minister of Health, they uh, formed and uh, they take, took a decision that a community support group can be formed at the uh, local hospital <coughs> complex and district hospital that may be led by any mayor of the municipality or local hospital chairman and with the representative of the member of the parliament. So, under that committee, the money will be deposited in the bank and no cash money will be encouraged. If anybody, a, a, a person can donate a fan, a person can donate a vehicle, a person can build a team shed for waiting for patients, a person can uh, donate a television for watching the waiting patients and waiting attendants. And if any person uh, wants to donate any money, that should be the bank. So community support group and community funds uh, uh, operation was formalized by the Ministry of Health to its health economic unit. So the situation improved dramatically. It cannot be measured by the donation of money. It can be measured with the people's participation that made many, many innovative things came out. And the doctors who are working there, they feel encouraged uh, uh, to present their uh, full time. Uh, in other situation, we can have many complaints that doctors uh, do not work uh, around the clock or they throw it away. Uh, they don't attend the uh, health complexes, but they come uh, once or twice in a month to draw the salary and then again go to Dhaka. But in those areas, the doctors who work there, they feel themselves important because community people, they respect them, they go, go there for help them, and they display their duty roster openly. Which doctor will uh, uh, attend the outpatient when? So they cannot uh, avoid the responsibility of doing their duty. And also, they can approach the local people's secretary if any problem of a doctor patient relationship it becomes uh, antagonistic. Uh, they can approach the community, community support group who sits regularly once in a month, uh, usually, to solve such type of problems. So, uh, and also, the revenue shot up significantly. We have taken donation of 10 taka, but in the long run, they have, uh, they have uh, contributed 10 times, 20 times, 200 times more revenue because if the Upozila Health Complex and District Hospital run smoothly, more and more people will come to seek health care and they have to buy ticket uh, uh, for their service, they have to uh, partially pay for the uh, pathological uh, test, they have to partially you know, uh, pay for other services. So this uh, fees is being collected by the government system and the Chogas and Jinada health facilities, they have shown that at the end of the year, their collection of revenue is much, much higher than the other Ujjala uh, health complex and district hospital. So, government uh, is also earned uh, more revenue from those uh, people participated, people, people community engaged uh, uh, health facilities. So, we have said that uh, there is a uh, system of uh, 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 price distribution by Ministry of Health for the last 15 years. Including the current year, the Jogas and Upazila Health Complex won first prize of Health Minister among the Upazila group. Uh, and similarly, for the last six years, Jinnadas District Hospital won the first prize among the district groups. So there is a healthy competition between the Upazila Health Complex and District Hospital, also the Medical College Hospital, who will win the first prize, second prize, third prize. So this system is on by the Minister of Health. In this way, the foundation was built by Chogasa Upazila Health Complex and Jinnada. District Hospital that has been evolved gradually into a model that is implicated by other uh, health facilities. And it became a learning center for the other health complex and district hospital. And we can cite some, this list uh, is not official, uh, but we can say I, I have visited those uh, from my experience. I have said that this example is more than being followed by these health facilities. Also, they have their own, uh, uh, their own unique innovation uh, that we are, we are recording it for replicating to other cells. Tangail Sarai Hospital, North Shinti 250 Mid Hospital, Thakurka Sarai Hospital among the Richie Hospitals and some others, they are following this uh, community uh, uh, engaged uh, 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 health management improvement system. Now, Monpura Bola, uh, we have Shishimurum uh, here, Prabhupada Mahalo, a journalist here who has visited with us. 
a remote island of Bay of Bengal uh, in the Bola district. Uh, the UHFP and the doctors, uh, they are so much dedicated. Uh, they have uh, made the Upojala Health Complex a fully vibrant uh, functional. So every mother who becomes pregnant, they do not visited to attend the Upojala Health Complex and it is running as a model. So we are encouraging them and the Upojala Health Complex officer is worried that when he will be promoted, he may move to the district hospital who will run the Upojala Health Complex. So still, it is, uh, uh, it is not institutionalized. We have to find a way so that other persons should, uh, who will join that may take this Upojala Health Complex as their own, uh, not only for doing routine corporate services, but making the Upojala Health Complex as their uh, own uh, uh, home and for enhancing their own infrastructure and facilities. We go to Upojala Health Complex in Dinaspur, Chiridbandur Upojala, Dinaspur, Vilanda Upojala in Tamarpur, Chibar Dasa in Jashur, and Udhikur in Dishan and also other Upojala Health Complexes, they are also functioning following this. Data so that they can, that can be analyzed and shown to the people that we have done 
causing improvement. Improvement of health is permitting and ensuring effective use and providing health education in an effective way. Not only reading out the pamphlet or showing the video, the, the doctors working there, they train the health educators and the other medical staffs to convince the mothers to attend the health complex. They convince them not to deliver at the home. That is unsafe. That may cause infection. So please come to the health facilities. Uh, you can make arrangement before the delivery date so that you can come to uh, make it a transport arrangement, make an emergency fund, etc. etc. So when the people become convinced by your health education messages, then you can say it is an effective health message. Otherwise, broadcasting health uh, messages in the television and radio or the print media does not work on the people. So they have created an example uh, to providing health education in an effective way. Clean environment and beautification. If we do not keep the hospital clean, it becomes the source of infection to the patient. Uh, in those hospitals, they are right. And the government sanctioned clinic, clear cleaner post is not in sufficient number to do the cleaning around the clock. So extra cleaners have been appointed by the local government from their own fund and also from the donation from the people who can donate. Health awareness of the teachers and the schools of, of the schools and colleges so that they can convince the mothers uh, and their sisters to have a safe delivery at the health facilities. <coughs> Towering challenges in opportunity. Every challenge they to take it positively and turn it into uh, opportunity. Implementation of 5S Kaizen, total uh, quality management to improve health and business model, uh, followed by the WHO and UNICEF to improve uh, health management uh, at the rural area. What has done by DCAC's action plan, formation of national technical committee has been done. I am also a member of that committee, Dr. Endon is a member of the committee and the ADG, Professor Nasima Sultana is the chair. Uh, involving founders of Chokasa in the model and expanding it throughout Bangladesh. Those people who have done the uh, Chokasa model, uh, they have been, uh, we have, we have uh, contacted them and they will act as trainers. Baseline survey of the health facilities that is uh, in the first phase have been done. We are drafting the strategy uh, that will be followed by others. And uh, there will be a workshop for finalization of the strategy. Uh, we have identified these districts in the in the first phase, those who are near to uh, uh, Chogas and Jirana model. It, it will take less time to implement there. And the rest of the health facilities will be in the second phase. Uh, we have visited the first place hospitals to identify challenges, uh, meeting a regular review by National Technical Council. Uh, we are developing training manual and uh, to pilot it. Uh, motivational meeting at grassroots level involving all stakeholders and partners. We have to motivate the community. We have to motivate the doctors. We have to motivate the uh, health uh, technologists. We have to motivate, uh, motivate the supporting staffs. So it is very much important. Implementation at first phase districts uh, from November uh, from this month. Formation of technical groups for hands on training. Hands on training will be done at the Upazila uh, level. Uh, formation of COVID support group is a very important requisite so that after motivating the doctors, we are going for forming the community support group. Implementation of second phase we hope to start from March 2019. And above all, we have to sustain the Jonas Sepulchre Health Complex and the other district hospital. Uh, I, had, uh, I, have, I was in the visiting team in the last month at Jogasa. Uh, there was no consultant gynecology there. They told sir, if we don't provide any consultant gynecology here, how can we sustain the level of uh, keeping safe other root level? So please, so we have uh, posted the one there. Also, there are some problems in the general, medical college, uh, general uh, district hospital. Otherwise, uh, we have to, from DC Health, uh, attach top post priority to keeping those hospitals functional, also looking at the other hospital beside them. And uh, uh, the effect of CJ model, Chokas in the model, was dramatic in those few hospitals where it is in practice. And improvement of mutual trust, security and confidence have been developed between health service receivers and providers. Mobilization of local resources was possible for improvement of quality and quantity of health care and option for resource mobilization for universal health coverage. That may be debated how we, we, we have to fund universal health coverage money. Uh, insurance cannot be a good option. 
and also taking money from willing donors at the local level that should be in a systematic way if anybody wants to donate money uh, how that can be utilized for uh, improving our uh, quality and quantity of healthcare. Quality and volume of healthcare includes significantly various forms of corruption and inequality could be controlled. In those health complexes, there is no in Bangla we call Dalal. You can see that government hospital, these middlemen or Dalal, they uh, try to influence the patient not to take care of the government hospital. They say it's very bad, very dirty, please go to our private clinic. There is a very, very good facility. But in those health complexes, the doctors working there, they took a very tough attitude towards these uh, brokers so that they cannot uh, misguide the patient uh, to uh, other uh, low quality private health care. And also the financial inequalities has dropped down into because separate people have been required for collecting money. Uh, in other health complexes, a, a technician is collecting money, also he is doing the test on his own. So that, that there might be a room for uh, any misuse of money. So uh, it has improved a lot. And many, many for improvement in uh, management. Another example of good governance and people's welfare based public administration have been developed. This, this model has shown us how the administration can be utilized for people's welfare. To achieve universal health coverage as well as increasing expanding, this model will be a basic contribution. And thank you all. Thanks, Dr. Rosey, for your presentation of the universal health coverage, at least the two models. I hope that uh, it will continue phase by phase so that one day we really have universal health coverage for Bangladesh. Your presentation, I'm sure, will generate a lot of questions from the participants. And not now, I hope. Uh, I think that we finish the second paper and then we take the questions uh, together. Right? The next speaker is <coughs> Professor Dr. Rashid Mahabub, a former professor, Department of Surgery, Babu Kudu Sheikh Mujib Medical University. He is the chairperson of the National Health Rights Movement in Bangladesh. Dr. Mahabub is also involved in the various social movements related to health and environment. He is the chairperson of People's Start Bangladesh chapter. Sorry, my heat is about your paper. I was just to say something from that paper on the historical perception of the medical and health of this creature. <clears throat> if we go back to Bombay, which is an Indian subcontinent, and the Medicare is I pay before the invasion of the British. In 1935, the Calcutta Medical College was established. Since then, this sort of medicine is practiced, what we say, order or another thing. But for the people, there is no Medicare service. Because Medicare is, they have not accepted as a public service. It is on charity. Because the charity for those who used to do the charity, it is the Jominas. They used to have their charitable dispensaries. Because on those days, there are more communicable diseases than non-communicable diseases. So they have to give life to their subject from communicable diseases because this is the time they will not get anyone to work for their land. In 1935, if we go, so Zawindar has got a seat in those medical colleges. They used to send their people to work their town. Officially, the British, when they come, there is a formative Medicare service. It is in the army, armed forces medical services. 
But that has created a problem because that is no service for the civil employees of clean and petty employees. So they used to depot from there to look after the civil employees of the Indian government. And that is the reason they are known as civil servants. But that is the one part. Next part is that that is the local government, the district board has come. The district board was given the public hand. Because on that public hand there are two things is important, sanitation and water supply. What we inherit in Pakistan, that we have a ministry in the province, provincial health, health, public health and social welfare. These three ministries was one. But, and there is a local government, where there is a, uh, under the local government, there is a public health department. But Medicare was not there. Again, when the civil service is been allowed to do the private practice, they take the donation from the jamindars to build up the hospitals. And most of the hospitals of, in this land was built up by the donations. And where these civil servants used to practice. That is, they have worked on that way. Now the question comes, at present Bangladesh, the thing has completely changed, even from Pakistan time. Pakistan time, they have established some of the public Medicare service delivery, in addition to the local government public health. But after Bangladesh, the public health department is merged with the Ministry of Health and there are public hospitals. And it was continuing for a long time, since 1980. There was no private hospitals. So the change is going on. Now, the question comes, who will take the responsibility of the Medicare? Is it the government or the man that himself? Because it is a political problem. Who, 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 what do we want? So do you want it should be go to the public sector or it should be responsible with me? These assembly must decide because it's the whole picture of the third world. Sometimes they say they have got no money. Even they don't they don't spend one percent of their GDP here. How the Medicare can be run? So different models are coming in the name that you can get there, you can get it. But they are not taking the responsibility. But my constituents got the right. It is the responsibility of the state of my head. But we are not going there. So I would ask this, I must tell you, particularly thought for people. You have to raise your hand. What do you want? What is the problem now? Well, because he has given a beautiful picture of a, some of the government or public health establishment taking the responsibility to make a better service area. But this is a voluntarism. It has got no structure. It, it depends upon the man. It has got no authority. So day after tomorrow, this project may not survive. But who we want service? Our service must be affordable. It must be accessible. And it must be quality. That is who we want. So how to get that? I don't know. There are so many models trying here and there. Because government is not, state is not taking the responsibility to have the Medicare for his subject. They are even sometimes they are going for insurance. But insurance here again it will be a business. If it is a business, they can have so many people may be interested. But benevolent insurance, who is to look it up? So we have got so many things to think about. We cannot finish it in a one session. First for Bangladesh, if I have to say. Public health must be dealt with a separate group of experts. It is not the 
general doctors who are working in a hospital environment, they can't take it. Because hospital environment is a medicare, they can make efficient care. So they have, I, I don't know, even it may be a debate with them that. Because public health engineering uh, department is doing two things now in Bangladesh. Their sanitation and water supply is their subject. Food safety has gone to the food department now. They have got there. They, but what do you do? Our public. Our, our people are doing aging. Our people has got some other, not food and other things, but health related. Other problems is there. That should be the non hospitalized. A problem that should be the part of the public. JAP problems. That is the public health problem. Adolescence problem. That is the public health problem. So we have to go there. Because we know for a sustainable development, we have to find it five things. It is a diabetes, hypertension, and kidney problems, lung problems. So these are the things we have to look after. Because who is going to measure the blood pressure in the community? I don't know. If they come to the hospital, then they measure it. But aged people need this support. They need the physiotherapy. These are the people, these are the public health problems. So public health is to be addressed in a separate way, not in a Medicare way. Now this question of Medicare, yes it is costly. Definitely we say costly. But up to some level, can we afford? Maybe higher of our cancer treatment. Maybe we not have affordable for all. But there are prevention. Even the public health is also going to preventive So prevention is also is there. School health can be there. Physical exercise can be there. Even planning. So there should be space for working. Child play. These are the public health related problems we have to look after. These are, this is not the job of the physician or the surgeon or the gynecologist. This project, most achievement is have been occurred in the maternity. Maternity of child death, they have got some benefit out of it. Maternal mortality has come. Definitely, it is a uh, millennium development achievement. But for the sustainable development, there needs more. So, these are the things we have to think. But, again, we can say, public and private, we have to say the public and private, how it can go together. Can we? Maybe there should be a partnership, public and private. If that, what for? Is it for their profit making? If it is a profit making, then it is hopeless. Then it is a, if it is a for the services, definitely we are doing that. At present, Bangladesh, there are 70,000 doctors. They are unemployed because there are, they are no less specialization to be work for them. But we are making human resource, but we are not in a position to utilize them. Is it the doctor's own initiative they should try to utilize themselves? Or is it that person have responsibility for that? Are you over doctor? Definitely we are not. But we need to plan. Yes, community training, I am one of the initiators. But that is not a, what we should say, professional service providing center. That is a service providing center, but there is no professional. We have a service provider. A provider has less knowledge on professional. So it can, we can utilize that. Another problem is there, what you know by us, we already three years work there. That our people for Medicare, they spend out of their pocket. Every day, those who are, what we say, poor, they go middle class. They, have, they are going to be poor by spending their money, which is more than 69% of their things. So, every day, it is, again, it has been found out. 
that is mostly that goes on ready care, medicine purchase, abuse investigation, higher professional fees and charges in the private sector. So it is unregulated till now. Even if we allow the private sector, that must be regulated by, by some mechanism, so it can be affordable. So there are a lot of things in the, I am just telling you, this is a picture of the whole third world. So we have to work from this world, a same public assembly, to raise these funds for those people do means for it. It must be a policy agenda. Now, last, another problem is called the price of the medicine. Bangladesh is lucky enough. Our price is less. But we write more medicine, three, four antibiotics. So, because there is a regulatory, then nobody checks one. <laughs> now, other third world countries, their medication price is too much. Because they cannot produce it, they have to import it. But we are lucky enough that we can produce our medication at least 90 percent from us. But that will not be sustained for a longer time. In 2033, the Intellectual Property Act is coming up. Then the, then the price will be more. So we have to prepare there. So how we can be the answer to the third one. So these are the things out, I think we should look after when you want that the same. Not the least. Such medical devices. If you go to the market, you can get from the Jinjira production to USA production. Are they all effective? I don't know. It will be everywhere, I mean, even in India. So, every nation should have a medical device using policy and standardization policy. But this is there. So, there are a lot of things we should, I, I, I can say, we have to work on. First one, again I should say, the is healthcare is a political agenda or a political agenda? That is to be finalized. To me, it is a political agenda. And we should try to include on the political agenda of all the political parties the what they can be on the Medicare. If they come in, at least we can get something. If they don't come in, they don't come. So, from this point, I don't want to speak anymore. We have a good, uh, what we could say, preventive health or our index or millennium development goal is good. That is in the public, public and sector. We have a good infrastructure. At least in every Ukojela, there is minimum 30 to 50 beds. There are more than 20 doctors. But we have not the capacity to function it. Somewhere around. We should try to make it function. Policy must be there. It is not the building. There are beautiful buildings, but bathroom is too dirty because there is no manpower. So we have to sit with the government how you can make it clean, not by that NGO initiatives. It must be the responsibility of the state. And at the same time, those who work, make them so they can somewhere other accountable for their jobs, punish and eliminate. So if you don't go like that, it will be. Next, can it be possible from the center? No, it is not. Decentralization is another way. Decentralization and empowerment is another way to make it important. He said he is improving from this project, they are improving from the center. But why don't the local local government should be there to look for after their way? What is their policy? How local government can give to a Medicare to his subject? It is their responsibility. The state passes a policy. So these all the things what we should say in Bangladesh context is essential. Third, Bangladesh is the private sector making an education. What we are sorry to say. They are knowledgeable, but they have to be skilled. Medicare is a skill job. It is not only knowledge job. So how to make them skilled? 
And we know that all these people who are coming because of doctors, we have to make them skillful doctors. Bombay, though I'm committed to all the medical colleges to provide private sector, they should also make the institution so that where they can be made skillful. This responsibility can be taken by the state. Because they may not take it, but the state can take this responsibility. These are the few things on all which is I have just added. If you have got anything to ask, I'm taking to us. Thank you, Professor Rashida Mahabu, for your concern about the health situation in Bangladesh. From Dr. Hussain, we heard about the two models which works, then we'll, we may have a future. If it doesn't, then we don't have any future. And rightly, Professor Rashid Mahu pointed out that health is actually at the end of the day. It's a political decision or political will. So even this model, what he said, the local government, uh, local uh, administration, cooperation is useful, which is government will. The government administration cooperates and helps, then probably it will work. And I fully agree with Professor Ravide Mahabu. That model at the Upazala Health Complex should be more on the local government way, people's participation, and not controlled from the center. So, in one way, we have seen a, a hope from the Dr. Hossein's presentation, and then we had a lot of concerns about the health problems in Bangladesh. So you may have a lot of questions to both of them. I now open the floor. Volunteers. Volunteers, please provide the microphone. Please introduce yourself and then put the question. Uh, they are the chairperson of USA 
Well, you know, health and regular health care center, uh, they have uh, so much scope uh, to utilize the budget from uh, you know, health, uh, union provision. Uh, our project, uh, our project, um, we discuss with all of uh, union uh, union post chairman and uh, conductor advocacy at district level uh, by the chair of uh, uh, the commissioner and introduce uh, their scope uh, how to, how to involve union position uh, utilize the budget and uh, uh, how to system the strength and there are uh, yeah, eight years in the CIA has a uh, management committee and new chairman was a uh, 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 chairperson and we have uh, uh, introduced uh, to started uh, normal delivery uh, but equipment, medicine, everything was a uh, no problem but uh, yeah, Bangladesh government has available but every company uh, uh, channel was slow they do not know whether uh, 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 all of the equipment medicine is available in the regional and central warehouse. But Mahoney, this project was uh, supply chain uh, regularization and uh, uh, local government uh, yeah, involved to uh, yeah, renovation and equipment. Uh, uh, equipment. But uh, uh, this learning, I can say, uh, only the government uh, uh, does the uh, standard and sustain the making sure. This is just uh, my learning that uh, 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 local government, uh, how to involve uh, in the Bangladesh the local government and to stand and sustain in the uh, health sector. Are there Yes, I am Dr. Mohan Abdel Hussain, working in the chairman of the Department of English of Goda University. Um, my question, I have only one question. From the very inception of the erection of the health complex in the level, I have a keen observation. The doctors are never motivated to stay in the Udara headquarters. So, the treatment is now um, very much good, service is not very much good to the people. And my question is this, that how can we motivate those doctors through the orientation? Is there any way to find out by giving reward and punishment? Thank you all. It is the failure of the government. Ah. They are responsible to the government. Government can take action, they can fire them, but government is simple because for their own business, not for the doctor's business. Unsatisfied patients 
from the physicians. They move from here to here. And as India is their mind, and definitely they have some data institute, they have, been, they have invested a lot on the private sector. Definitely our patient is not going on their public hospitals because there is no space. So they are going on private sectors because those sectors have developed three things. One, higher investment, higher professional education, and higher extraction of money. So it is, it is, it is there. Nobody can prevent them. Till we can develop higher technology, in private sector and professional education. Let me do clean, sir. You are not clean. Bangla hai bolchi. Apnar deshe ore follows kore ora ora pastara hospital rachi. Kintu private public sector ta kintu ko. Abo apnar deshe ora ne kato kulo bhalo hospital rachi jara world class. If we can name some of them, Metrola. Tata, if no. but, uh, Apple, Apple is not in but in Madras. So definitely we are lack of some technology development also. And most of the people here from Calcutta they go tourism and to see a doctor too. So there are a lot of things on it. Medical tourism is not unusual. So there are more people go to Bangkok and and Singapore also. Here we will develop our own technological development. And India is promoting also medical tourism. Three years it was not there. Now we can have a visa of medical tourism from here also. So I don't find anything wrong with it. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Asanullah Ismaili from Bangladesh. I am working with mushrooms. Only three questions is my one is in my country sir also when he was giving his face mentioning Dalal Bhuka is as like cancer in my country. I love my country that's why I feel it I am from Sharia Sport District. Another thing that politicians, when, how, I ask Dias that how long we be this, how we can finish it, politicians handle it. Our health is very important for our future generation. I am doing with mushrooms. Why not prescribe MBBS doctors for eating mushrooms? These are on the world now for stabilizing the without side effect. This one is our my my special portion. Thank you very much. Professor Mehboob said that it's the political 
आइडियोलॉजी और पॉलिटिकल मोटिव आई मे नॉट से मोटिव बट एटलीस्ट द पॉलिटिकल प्रेशर दैट मी ड्रिंक फॉरवर्ड और इनहेंस द हेल्थ फॉर द कॉमन पीपल but one particular question is very specific that in the third world countries where we are trying to establish this health for the common people the governments are under tremendous pressure from the international monetary organizations the international organizations are keeping always a focus and a pressure on these governments so how do you expect that the governments will be going forward with more pro people projects and not curtailing or not going to adopt the austerity measures number one what may be the forms of movement of this pha or all the people across the world who can pressurize all the governments to adopt certain policies where there will be increase in the allocation of their national health projects the total amount the budgetary allocations will increase until and unless there will be increase in the budgetary allocations there cannot be pro people reforms or pro people projects which ultimately will reach to the ground level because you i do accept fully accept that uh, what uh, professor mehboob had said you yourself has stated that in bangladesh we have the infrastructure but how do we take this infrastructure to the common people that's also the second question which i place before you because one question which my comrade has already raised before you that people from bangladesh are rushing to india to get the medical health care but the answers which you have given to this house with a bit of a difference i may once again say that maybe that the private sector has infused money but that does not mean that the indian government will not have a check on these private sector that to what extent they are charging the people from bangladesh who are going to have this medical treatment in india so that also should be a check on the part of the government of bangladesh as well as the government of india thank you there are three things we have to do now it is as say the political decision socialism definitely is the political demand national health care in, in some of the state is a is the political demand cuba is running a national health scheme also so it is it should be on the agenda and we these people have open people can be with the, with the other organizations because about their health so that it can come into the with the agenda to have a budget and how to make a discipline on the health care now the question comes movement of bangladesh to india on health care definitely we have to say our first thing what we have said that higher technologically definitely we are deficit on manpower also so they are going on now the question indian government is already providing with a medical visa the the system is that you have to you have to make a fix up with a hospital or a doctor so that they can get visa Bangladesh government previously, when I was a student, nobody can go treatment outside. Until and unless it was passed by the board to, to the health ministry and their permit. Now when the MPs are gone, free citizen, free medical, so that they can see the group. But do you want to prevent it? Then the question again, Bangladesh has not developed the capability. And at the same time, you can also say, Bangladesh economy is going up, so people wish it is sometimes there. Which hotel they will take food? It is their wishes. And universal village, when we say, definitely it is their affairs. But anyway, we have an infrastructure. We have said because infrastructure and to purchase the machine that is done by the government because 
there is a profit there because contracting and the machine purchasing. So state is more interested to make the infrastructure and to purchase. Whether it has been utilized or not, they are not going to for that. So these are the these are the problems with the management or the administration. Definitely we have checked these things in different way. In Bangladesh, the health care movement activists sometimes works with some of the public sector hospitals because they have the machine. I can I can give you one or two examples. Oval machine has been ordered from China. Right? But the source was not given. Only the junk of the machine has come. That is the done by the Bangladesh government. These then people who are in charge of the ministry. So a lot of things has come. So we have to be, people self movement has a responsibility that you should check the Medicare of that area. Is it a pro people or empty people? If you have a group with the others make a network, definitely you can make them alert and get the benefit of it. That is the way we can work. We cannot find any other way. Or the people's involvement can be better. Sir, I want to add three lines. Uh, you have asked that how we can uh, hope that such type of government will do such and such things. You know, you know, uh, in Bangladesh, our constitution, one of the four principles is socialism. I don't know how we are going to implement it. It is not uh, said, but in uh, later, it is right written there. Uh, that is the point, and uh, government is committed to achieve. Sustainable Development Goal by the year 2030 uh, or 32. So, taking two from that, we can demand that you have committed to achieve universal, uh, universal health coverage and really, uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goal by the year 2032. Why don't you allocate money? In our government, even health minister cries loudly, increase allocation to the health sector before the budget, but he and his team is not successful. So I don't know why. If the health minister desires that health budget should be increased, why it is not been achieved? So he should fight or he should call us to join his fight so that we can increase our budget and utilize the money efficient so that we can achieve the goals. Thank you. Uh, let me close the session here uh, because the next session will be at 4 o'clock and which is a very important one. Uh, let me tell you that from the two speakers we heard about the hopes as well as challenges like any other third world countries. So we have to try hard people's health movement and other movements. We have to raise our voice, raise our demand, pressurize the government and then see whether we can achieve something or not. In spite of hopes and challenges, I must say Bangladesh is a beautiful country. And the people are nice, they are very friendly. I will say that please come again and visit us and see whether we improve. Thanks very much.
Quaker with Theo MacDonald, who, who, who was blind, and she guided him through the streets every day to, to, the, um, to the assembly. But I thought it would be nice to recognize what her granddaughter said, because many of us as activists, the people who miss out from the time that we spend as an activist are our families. Uh, our brothers, our sisters, our children, our mothers, you know, all, all the different people. So it's very nice that her, her granddaughter, Alex Monti, talked about her amazing, inspiring grandmother. Um, Maya was born in Latvia, and she remembers the Latvian Paragi at Christmas time, traveling to Nicaragua together. And she made the point that one time, she was always doing amazing things. She would always update them with postcards, and she would always send them emails telling them what she was doing. Them. And this one is lovely where she said that she took her first solo trip down to Costa Rica, and Maya insisted on taking the bus with her just to turn around and go back to Nicaragua. So a devoted grandmother. And she's just so grateful that, as she said, her, her grandmother had a fiery soul and passionate heart and noted that she'd always be close to her heart, reminding her to be brave, honest, intelligent, and strong. So a beautiful tribute from a granddaughter who was totally inspired by her. Um, that was one of the last hearing council meetings that I think um, Maya attended. And just to recognize that her, her spirit continues, and I'll try my Spanish, hasta la victoria siempre. <laughs> And just saying to her, rest in peace, I think she has inspired another generation, not just her grandchildren, but many other young people. So that's Maya. Thank you.
and the usurpation of this role by agencies such as the World Bank and private foundations such as the Gates Foundation was clear in his address to the 61st World Health Assembly in 2008 when he said, most importantly, the first commitment, constitutional function of WHO reads to act as the directing and coordinating authority on international health work. Please do note that the Constitution says the and not a directing and coordinating authority. The 60s and the 70s were the Cold War period, with then the Soviet Union and the United States vying with each other to assume leadership. It was also the area of disease control, when health systems were primarily designed to control infectious diseases through what were known as vertical programs. Dr. Mahler and some of his colleagues sensed the widespread dissatisfaction with top-down systems that had little place for local communities and in more low- and middle-income countries were driven by Western perceptions and priorities. Working in colleagues, with colleagues in WHO and in tandem with Henry Lowe's, then Executive Director of UNICEF, Dr. Mahler was responsible for crafting the primary health care approach to address health holistically. Dr. Mahler and his colleagues adroitly and negotiated contradictory perceptions to the then bipolar globe and produced the Declaration on Primary Health Care, ratified in 1978 by 131 member states of the World Health Organization, gathered in the former Kazakh capital, Almaty. The primary health care approach was both elegant in its simplicity and startling bold in the sweep of its vision. At its core, the approach stressed the importance of allocating most focus and resources to the community and to the primary level. Clinics and health centers, where the people live, where they work, where they fall ill, and first seek care. The declaration defined primary health care, as essential health care based on practical, scientifically sound, and socially accessible methods and technologies made universally accessible to individuals and families in the community through their full participation and at a cost that the community and the country can afford to maintain at every stage of their development in the spirit, spirit of self-reliance and self-determination. Later in life, Dr. Mahler would lament the delusion of the vision of primary health care and that approach as a consequence of both the medicalization of primary health care through the introduction of selective child survival initiatives and the imposition of conservative economic policies, structural adjustment programs in the global south and now also in the north by international agencies such as the World Bank and the IMF. He commented, when people are mere pawns in an economic and profit-growing game, that game is mostly lost for the underprivileged. However, he remained optimistic about the intellectual and visionary power of the approach. He began his address in, that, in 2008 to the World Health Assembly by quoting Milan Kundera. The struggle against human oppression is the struggle between memory and forgetfulness. He ended his address by saying, and so, being an inveterate optimist, I do believe that the struggle between memory and forgetfulness can be won in favor of the Alma the Health for All vision and in related primary health care strategies. Dr. Mahler remained a champion of primary health care and of people's movements striving to make a, that vision a reality. Many health activists 
will recall his towering presence at the National Health Assembly in Kolkata in those meetings, and subsequently in Dhaka at the first People's Health Assembly. He was also, which, which was the precursor of the People's Health Movement, of course. He was also an active participant in the second People's Health Assembly in Cuenca, Ecuador in 2005 and said in an interview given to the People's Health Movement in 2007, listen carefully, the People's Health Movement is the only movement that understands and works toward comprehensive primary health care unlike other so civil society networks who focus on specific diseases. With Dr. Mother's passing, the movement for creating a just and equitable society where health is not a commodity but a universal right has lost a great thinker, a dear friend, and a comrade in arms. Today, the World Health Organization has been reduced to a mere pawn of both rich countries which have stocked it of its resources and the private corporations and foundations which promote commercialized and techno technocratic solutions to health programs rooted in growing inequities. At this sad time, it's worth recalling WHO's constitution, which states, the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic or social condition. <coughs> Viva Health and Moment. <laughs> and now I want to share with you something about primary health care prior to the Almaty Declaration. Some people think that primary health care began with Almata. Well, Safrula and I come from struggles for national liberation. And in our countries, this kind of work with primary health care was being done from the mid-60s in Central and some places in South America, long before anybody thought of Almata. We were, in Central America, we began training community health promoters in the 1960s in different countries of Central America. And many of us were separated from one another. We didn't know one another. But finally, we were able to come together in 1975. 1975. Three years before Alma'aka, we formed a network of people who were working with community health workers, not with our governments. Our governments were military dictatorships, and the kind of work that we were doing was seen as subversive. And I suppose in retrospect, it really was, right? Because we were talking about health for all the people, and in our countries, Many people were marginalized, many people had no access, there were no rural health services, there were barely any public health services at all. So we trained community health workers during those years. Many of them were women, especially women who were working as midwives. And midwives in our indigenous communities of Latin America, many of them are seen as sacred workers, people who have a sacred role to perform in, to, uh, perform in their communities. So, those of us who were working on those programs in the different countries of Central America and Mexico felt that the Amat, the Declaration, was the answer to our prayer because now governments were saying we should be carrying out primary health care as governments. And we really believed that things would move forward. But soon what happened 
the selective primary health care came into the picture, and we'll hear more about that later. But I want to tell you that over the years, with people from Central America, people from other parts of the world, like Africa, like Asia, people sitting at this table, three of us sitting at this table, and people in this audience came together in a meeting in Nicaragua in 1991. 1991, after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And our meeting was, we had dreamed of a way that, that we who were struggling for a different, a different way of looking at this world, of a world where there would be socialist goals and not capitalist goals, we suddenly were left with, what are we going to do now? How can we assure that in this new phase, not the phase that we had dreamed of, how can we be assured that primary health care will go forward? So we formed the International People's Health Council.